Right now at six mining days in Pittsburgh wraps up with a free swim day. And we've got a pretty decent start to the day out there. Just a few clouds here and there. We'll talk about how warm it's going to get and that forecast to get you out the door coming up. Plus, residents in Parsons participate in a fun run to raise awareness about gun violence. Good morning and welcome to <laughs> <laughs> <How are you laughs> Morning doing? News. It's 6 a.m. I'm Molly Snowy and now you know what we do. In the few seconds, it's <laughs> only a few ready. seconds, but it's just enough time. <laughs> enough you know, I've, I've talked hair. about this, though, is uh, I can't th my ties. And if somebody's got some advice on what to do about this all the time through yeah. the morning, especially these ones, they start to loosen where then there's this gap. At is the it because of the my, fabric that makes it a little slick? I think that might be part of it, but boy, mm. I tell you, it's extraordinarily annoying because I know it looks really bad at home too, where <laughs> I've got this gap, like I don't know how to tie a tie and I've got at least half a clue. So that's, wow. I try and fix that when I come up here in those few seconds, but. And now you know. Well, welcome. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Welcome to Monday here in the four states. Uh, so we've got uh, very warm weather on the way. We uh, had a lot of rainfall right. over the weekend as well. Let's, uh, let's start with a look outside. Uh, from our camera at the uh, Cornell Complex in downtown Joplin, we may, or there we are, there we are. It's Monday, all right? The coffee hasn't fully kicked in. Mondays are the days you got to have like four or five cups of coffee to get the day going. Uh, Mother Nature doesn't need any coffee to get the day going. Hopefully she doesn't have any because uh, it seems like when she does, it gets a little hectic out there. But a beautiful start to the day. Modoc camera 32nd in range line. Same deal. Again, a few clouds out there. Otherwise, really not bad. What we have to contend with those all the rain we got this weekend. So we do have these flood warnings that will continue through 7 a.m. in the brighter shades of green here, the bulk shades of green and then we've got various river creek and stream flood advisories and they have assorted expiration times that'll continue uh, through the next couple of days so you got to take precautions out there on average in this zone three and a half inches of rain but you look in the southwestern missouri and these purples here picking up upwards of eight inches of rain nothing on the future track as we head through the afternoon and evening other than a stray cloud or two and we'll see a few more clouds as we go overnight tonight as for right now you head out the door a great start to the day mid upper 50s, even seeing some low 50s in some spots out there. So for this time of year, relatively cool start out there. All right, temperatures upper 70s, low 80s today, plentiful sunshine, maybe a passing cloud or two. We'll go partly cloudy as we head into the overnight hours, and then temperatures are really going to start to warm up over the next few days. We'll break down those details in the full forecast here in a few more minutes. Elise. All right, Chris, thanks. Well, the mother and one of the children involved in a Parsons, Kansas house fire Wednesday have died of their injuries. The Parsons Police Department announced Friday that Kristen Vargas, the mother of the four children, died Friday morning in the hospital. One of her daughters, an 18 month old infant, died at the hospital on Thursday. Two other children, a seven month old and a four year old, are still receiving treatment in the hospital, and the fourth child, a six year old has been placed with a relative. Police arrested another resident of the home, Jack Melton, at the scene on a charge of unrelated from the fire. Officials are still investigating that fire. Well, a two vehicle crash on Range Line sends two people to the hospital. The crash occurred at about 3 o'clock Saturday at 17th and South Range Line. Numerous witnesses said the driver of the SUV was ejected on impact. The car involved went over curbs and through landscaping, coming to a stop in the U.S. cellular parking lot on the northwest corner. Joplin police say the two transported to hospital suffered non-life-threatening injuries, and authorities are still investigating what occurred. To be the first to see breaking news, weather, and sports, you can download the KOEM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOEM News app. The municipal Frontenac swimming pool wrapped up the mining days festivities with a free swim yesterday, allowing everyone to beat the heat without beating their bank account. The free swim is the traditionally the last event to cap off mining days. For me, it just kind of feels like another normal day at work, but uh, it's just I think it's a, a good way for people to end their weekend, come uh, go for a swim, cool off after a 
hot day out here. The free swim got moved from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. due to low temperature. Well, Forest Park in Parsons was filled with a sea of orange Saturday morning with community members coming together to wear orange weekend. The orange represents the color hunters wear to not be shot and wear orange weekend is about raising awareness for gun violence in the United States. KOM Samantha Walker has more. Dozens of t-shirts are strung up across Forest Park and Parsons, representing a voice that can no longer be heard. It's a visual symbol because every day 120 people die from firearms and another 200 are injured. So we wanted to make a visual to imagine these are all people who die every day from firearms. The shirts are part of an event organized by the Parsons chapter of the Mothers Demand Action Group, an organization advocating for gun safety and common sense gun law. The group joined hundreds of chapters across the country in holding an event to raise awareness on gun violence in the United States, particularly the rates in which children are affected. We don't want your child to become a statistic. Every, well, every year 355 children accidentally shoot themselves or others. So that's something we can prevent. Numerous community organizations are involved in the annual fun run, helping to provide information and resources on common sense gun safety and practices. Local law enforcement agencies are also present, giving out free gun locks, hoping to limit access to firearms for children and others. When you have to pick up a gun and open up the lock, you have to actually think about what you're doing. And it gives you a moment to stop and think about those types of things. Many attendees and volunteers at the event have a personal connection to someone impacted by gun violence. For many parents at the fun run, the thought of children being at risk, it's close to home. When I was in school, the drills that we had were fire drills, tornado drills. But my children went to school with active shooter drills their whole time, and that's not right. We, in America, our children shouldn't be killed by guns. This is the number one killer. It should be some other accident, something that we can't control, not gun violence. For organizers and volunteers, they say the event will be a success if even one person goes home to be a little bit safer. We're not trying to take anyone's guns away. I grew up, my dad was an avid hunter, my husband's a hunter. That stuff, that's not what we're about. But just keeping them locked up, keeping them safe, it's about protecting people and just helping people with resources to make good decisions about their guns. Reporting in Parsons, Samantha Walker, KOM News. The event held a fundraising drive for Safe House Crisis Center, an organization that assists people experiencing domestic violence, sexual assault, or stalking. Organizers say individuals going through those types of crisis are more likely to be impacted by gun violence. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOM Morning News. Biden administration officials say new asylum restrictions have not yet curbed border crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border. Plus, the families of four Israeli hostages taken by Hamas on October 7th are now back with their families. And Chris Warner returns with another look at your Monday forecast. You're watching the KOA Morning News. We'll be right back. But first, here's a live look from the SEK Nature Center in the cave. <music> Topping Nation Watch this morning. A judge has decided to let Google avoid a jury trial after the tech company cut the government a check. Friday, a federal judge ruled the antitrust lawsuit by the Biden administration against Google will be decided by a judge and not a jury. That is, if the lawsuit isn't dismissed altogether. That's because Google wrote a $2.3 million check paying the full amount of monetary damages being sought in the lawsuit. The Department of Justice and multiple states allege Google bullied publishers and advertisers into using the company's proprietary ad technology products. Biden administration officials say new asylum restrictions have not yet curbed border crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border. 
Encounters at the southern border continue to average about 4,000 people a day. New asylum restrictions went into effect earlier this week, and senior administration officials say they do expect the number of crossings to drop. The new rules also allow them to more quickly remove migrants. The administration says they have conducted 17 deportation flights this week. After eight long months, the families of four Israeli hostages taken by Hamas on October 7th are now back with their families. The complex rescue mission resulted in heavy fire, killing hundreds of Palestinians on the ground, according to Hamas. CBS's Naomi Ruckham shares a message from the families of the former hostages as they keep up their fight to bring all of them home. After more than 245 days of prayer, the families of four Israeli hostages kidnapped to Gaza by Hamas on October 7th finally embraced their loved ones. 26-year-old Noah Argamani, who was taken from the Nova Music Festival during the attack, returned home on her father's birthday. The operation to free the hostages left an Israeli commando dead after the Israeli military says its forces came under heavy fire during the daytime mission. According to Hamas, more than 270 Palestinians were also killed. The group does not differentiate between civilian and militant casualties. In another setback for the civilians of Gaza, amid safety concerns, the UN World Food Program has paused distribution of humanitarian aid from an American-built pier in the territory. Of State Antony Blinken returns to the Middle East today with no firm response on a ceasefire since the White House made a proposal 10 days ago. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Secretary Blinken's trip will include visits to Egypt, Israel, Jordan, and Qatar. During his visit, he will ask leadership to urge Hamas to accept the proposed ceasefire on the table, which calls for the release of more hostages and a temporary pause in the fighting. The militant group has yet to respond to that deal. And that's a look at some of today's top national stories. Here's Chris with a look at your forecast. Yeah, aside from just a few clouds on the Skywatch Storm Tracker, we are looking pretty good. Get an opportunity to dry out and warm up. Look at that sunrise this morning. Absolutely gorgeous. Temperatures a bit cool, but again, warmer weather on the way. We'll have another look at your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Good morning, I'm Elise Snowy with your KOAM News Update. A two-vehicle crash on Range Line sends two people to the hospital Saturday afternoon. The crash occurred on 17th and South Range Line. Numerous witnesses said the driver of the SUV was ejected on impact. Joplin police say the two transported to hospitals suffered non-life-threatening injuries and authorities are still investigating what occurred. The Parsons Police Department announced Friday that Kristen Vargas, the mother of the four children and her 18 month daughter, died from a house fire in Parsons last week. Two other children, a seven month old and a four year old, are still receiving treatment in the hospital. The fourth child, a six year old, has been placed with a relative. Officials are still investigating the fire. And we've got a warm and sunny day across the area. Maybe a straight cloud here or there. Temperatures upper 70s, low 80s. And we'll have a north breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. See a few more passing clouds through the evening and eventually going partly cloudy overnight, but still cool back into the upper 50s and low 60s. That cool does not last long. A few clouds tomorrow. Sunny skies all the way into the weekend. Maybe a few clouds Saturday. It's the temperatures, though, starting to warm up as summer take holds. Where it takes hold, we're looking at upper uh, 80s and low to mid 90s. Welcome back. We have Lori Horton in the studio with us today. She's going to teach us how to make Oreo lovers cookies. Good morning to you, Lori. It is Monday. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, this is a really simple recipe today, but we've got a couple of kind of prep things that we have to do before okay. we really get started putting these together. So we're going to start out with this Oreo cookies, chocolate sandwich cookies. Absolutely, yes. What we want to actually do, this is a little bit of a tip. When you have a recipe that calls for crushed Oreos, right. we're actually going to separate the filling. Okay, the best part. The best part. <laughs> we're going to use it, don't worry. Okay, good, okay. <laughs> but when you put that in your bag and you put it in this right. all the pieces, it kind of just turns into a gummy mess. Yeah. So by separating 
incorporating the filling, we get a good crush of the chocolate cookie pieces. And we're actually going to add that filling to our wet dough and get a little more of that really good flavor of oh, it. Fantastic. So it really highlights it and it adds more flavor, believe it or not, and uh, works out really well. So we're just going to separate all of that. We're going to get those 10, 10 to 11, 12 if you like, make okay. it an even dozen, you know, 10 Might is good, well. 11 is better. Absolutely. And <laughs> take those leftover pieces. Okay. We're going to put them in a sandwich bag and we are then just going to crunch those up into nice small pieces because when we get done we're going to put them in our cookie dough so we don't want real big right. chunky pieces this is where you get to sort of act out your uh, monday morning aggressions <laughs> you know, get rid of all of that you can be nice and yeah. you can crush these on a flat surface you can take your rolling pin and really get after that but we just want to make them really nice small pieces and that works out well. Use a freezer bag, a little bit thicker yeah, bag so yeah. that you don't just tear it up. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with our cookies and cream candy bar. Ooh, those are so good. And this is pretty much the best one that I could find. It's yeah. a big size bar. Okay. You can use as much or as little of that as you want. And you're going to take that bar and just chop it up into nice fine pieces as well. So you want a pretty good size, nice substantial knife for that. And we want to crunch this up into, move this over out of my, all my stuff, um, but just some nice fine pieces. Yeah. Because again, we're going to put this into our cookie dough. You don't want to bite into that and have a really giant piece of it, but you also don't want that chocolate melting into a big piece when you go to bake these. Absolutely. So we're gonna get all of that prep stuff done and then when we come back, we're actually gonna make our cookie dough, which again, super simple. Yes. You just need to get all of these things ready first. Gotta do your prep work. All that prep work and then we're gonna pop everything together and have a really yummy, soft, cakey type cookie with a really tasty vanilla frosting on top. We'll add a little bit of extra crushed cookie pieces. Again, Oreo lovers dream. You can't go wrong. All right, thanks, Lori. Stick around, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News at 622 on this Monday morning. And this is a live look from our camera on the Cornell Complex, downtown Joplin. A few clouds, otherwise a beautiful start to the day and temperatures quite acceptable as well. MoDOT camera 32nd and range line looking good as we head down to the south into Neosho. Looking back to the west from 60 and 59. Uh, that's less drive right there looks fairly good as well. We did get quite a bit of rainfall out there, and this is a look at those flood warnings. They run until 7 a.m. today for the bigger highlighted areas. However, various River Creek stream flood advisories, these have varying expiration times over the next uh, couple of days. So if you're planning on being in the water this weekend or this week, rather, especially in the southeastern Kansas and uh, northeast Oklahoma, make sure you're paying attention to those water levels out there. Over the last 48 hours, you can see where the batch of heavy, heavier rain has been. And as you get into southwest Missouri, some of these totals upwards of eight inches of rain in the last two days. Now, the future track giving us a break here. Other than a few passing clouds, we are dry and we are warm and temperatures are going to continue to warm up as we head into the next several days across the area. So the excessive rain presents its own problem and all this sunshine presents a different problem. UV index today is very high, uh, but means your burn time is about eight to 10 minutes. So I know a lot of professions out there. You've got to be outside. You can't fix the road in your house or under a closed environment. So if you do have to be outdoors, make sure you're taking precautions. If you don't have to be outdoors, probably better to stay inside where you can. Otherwise, limit your time outside. Our camera seventh and range line. Another beautiful shot of that sunrise looks fantastic. Again, a bit cool 56 in Joplin. The winds are calm. Temperatures around the area. Again, for the second week of June here, you can't complain. Mid upper 50s, even a couple of low 50s and starting to see some low 60s a little further west and we'll warm up to about average today with plentiful sunshine. Again, just a few passing clouds 76 by 11 o'clock this morning ahead of highs into the upper 70s and low 80s and we'll have a north breeze at around 5 to 10 miles an hour. Heading into the evening, we'll see a few more passing clouds eventually becoming partly cloudy overnight down to 68 by 10 lows again. Pretty cool tonight, upper 50s and low 60s. However, it's June. It's the second week of June. We're getting into the third week of June uh, following this, of course, and it is summertime and it is going to start to feel that way. Temperatures starting to warm. We're going to see sunny skies. 
gradually getting into the upper 80s near 90. Then we start to get into the low to uh, even mid 90s as we head into this upcoming weekend. So make sure you're taking appropriate precautions, staying hydrated as these temperatures really start to take off over the next several days. And we could see a stray shower to by next Wednesday. That's a check of your forecast. Now we're going to send it over to Elise with Health Watch. Thanks, Chris. The doctors say they're getting closer to understanding Parkinson's disease. Scientists from the University of Dundee say they found a molecular switch in the brain that helps protect people from the disease. They hope it could one day lead to drugs that benefit patients. Parkinson's is the fastest growing brain disorder in the world with no effective treatments to slow the condition. We're learning new details about how the brain works when we have to make important decisions. Researchers at New York University tested human brain activity while navigating a maze on a computer. They found when we plan something, the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus actually create a mental stimulation, visualizing different options, and that helps us make important decisions. Well, aging in the body increases even if the brain only thinks we are overeating. A study of animals found that even if their diet hadn't changed at all, when cells in the brain were given information that the animal was overeating, their internal organs showed more signs of aging. The study authors say this could help them understand how, brain pro how the brain processes could lengthen or shorten a person's lifespan. Las Vegas hospitals are reporting an increase in patients because of the extreme temperatures. Heat exhaustion can cause nausea, fatigue and dizziness. Experts are warning people to reduce time outside and monitor for symptoms. Kristen Drummond reports. And I think it's more of an emotional piece than it is a physical acclimation that we have to get around to. It's more about ourselves acclimating to a new temperature and what that means in terms of our outside activities. And we're going to be curtailing some of those activities perhaps sooner than we would have in other seasons when the temperature rose later in the in the summer. Dr. David Weissmiller sitting down with me Thursday. The family and community medicine professor at the UNLV Kirk Kerkorian School of Medicine says heat exhaustion can happen with these triple digit temperatures. Physical effects can include nausea or confusion. It's a result of not enough fluids in the body. Dr. Weissmiller says the body will react oh. and essentially prioritize which organs need to function to stay alive during that type of exposure. There's always going to be blood shunted to the organs that are most important. Our brain and our heart are always going to take priority as other things start to um, show compromise. So when you're feeling it, you may not be experiencing any type of organ issues yet. However, that is where things are headed if you don't get adequate perfusion. During this heat, experts say always stay hydrated and never ignore signs of heat exhaustion, such as dizziness, fatigue, and nausea. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. We'll be right back. Right now at 630, the town of Altamont hosts its annual Flag Day celebration. And we've got an absolutely beautiful start to the day out there. It is going to be warm, it will be sunny, and it is going to get warmer yet. We'll have a look at that forecast, get you out the door coming up. Plus, Pittsburgh's Lincoln Park plays host to bands from all over for the Halfway Home Music and Arts Festival. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 631. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. It's Monday here in the four states. And I would like to thank Facebook for taking a moment to uh, share some pictures from my senior year in high school. Yeah. Almost 20 years ago. How I'd does like that to feel. Uh, <laughs> I feel even older. The thing is, it feels <laughs> like it's been 20 years since then. Oh. Uh, but uh, I might share that post. So, uh, yeah. my, my friends there on Facebook uh, from 20 years ago. I'll share some of those Check old pictures. Yeah. yeah, there's a great, great <laughs> trip back in time for sure. 
All right, let's talk about <laughs> right now, though. Let's not remind ourselves that we are getting older because it's something we can't stop, but it is getting warmer and we can't stop that either because oh, it's June. It's going to happen, yeah. but it's a beautiful start to the day, even a little bit on the cool side. We've got a great shot from the MoDOT camera 32nd and range line. We've had just a handful of clouds here and there. That will be the case for the next couple of days we will otherwise be dry. However, we got a lot of rain this past weekend, and because of that, we do have flood warnings out there. So so the broader highlighted areas here, these flood warnings go through seven o'clock this morning. And then for all the rivers, Creek stream flood advisories out there, they have varying expiration times over the next couple of days. So if you're planning on being on the water, especially in the southeast Kansas and northeast Oklahoma, make sure you're checking those levels. These water levels can be dangerous. You've got to be careful out there because we received this kind of rain on average in this red box that we highlighted here. It's about three and a half inches, but in southwest Missouri, some of these purple colors, that's upwards of eight, nine inches of rain. Future track heading into the afternoon and evening. There's really not much on it other than those few passing clouds, so we're going to be dry and we will be warm, but we do have a pretty cool start to the day. Starting to see some 60 degree readings. Most of us, though, mid to upper 50s. Highs about average into the upper 70s and low 80s, sunny skies, and again, maybe a passing cloud or two. As mentioned, though, it's June, it's summertime. Temperatures are really going to start to warm up, uh, get just downright hot over the next several days. We'll break down those details in the full forecast a little later. Elise? All right, we'll check in with you soon, Chris. The city of Altamont held its annual Flag Day celebration on Saturday. The all-day celebration included some usual staples, such as turtle races and a water balloon toss, as well as some new events like a quilt show and an esports tournament. A $500 medallion hunt was held during the week leading up to the event. A new activity is being held towards the end of mining days, and that is a pickleball tournament. 21 teams of all ages participated in the first ever tournament yesterday in a round robin format. Medals were awarded to the top three teams and all proceeds went to the Frontenac Rotary. Citizens in Pittsburgh had the opportunity to enjoy live music in Lincoln Park Saturday at the Halfway Home Music and Arts Festival. Attendees could enjoy music from seven bands across six genres, including hard rock, country, Americana, and more. Proceeds from Saturday's event go to revitalizing the J.J. Richards Bandshell. A great time. I, I guess that would be the thing you would want for every concert. Um, I want them to be aware that we started with just multi-genres too. I didn't want this to be a country festival. I didn't want it to be a red dirt festival. Uh, my, my preference is metal. Uh, it isn't a metal fest. Um, we have all genres of music and I wanted, I wanted to touch everyone that's willing to come out and sit in the park and listen to music all day. Future festivals are planned for Fort Scott and Parsons. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. U.S. banks could find new business in Cuba as the Biden administration eases econ economic restrictions there. And we have a warm and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywalk Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back, but first, Here's a live look from the SEK Nature Center and Cave. In Consumer Watch this morning, U.S. banks could find new business in Cuba as the Biden administration eases economic restrictions. There, whether they take advantage of it or not, will all depend on their appetite for risk. Patrick Oppmann reports from Cuba. This small store in Old Havana called Dador, or Giver, produces its own clothing line and is a must visit on just about every Cuba insider's list. As with many other privately owned businesses on this island, for visitors to Dador, it's cash only. U.S. economic sanctions mean communist-run Cuba is off limits to the U.S. financial system, which for Cuban entrepreneurs usually means most banks, even non-U.S. banks, don't want their money. But changes announced by the Biden administration in late May are giving Cuba's scrappy business pioneers cautious hope. A lot of the Cuban businesses are very much dependent on um, foreigners coming to Cuba 
Uh, so having access to credit cards and being able to do those transactions will be very positive. And just like anywhere in the world now, people don't really travel with cash anymore. While the U.S. economic embargo remains very much in place, the Biden administration is allowing Cuban entrepreneurs to open bank accounts in the U.S. and access online banking. As the island transitions, however slowly, from a centralized Soviet-style bureaucracy to an economy that permits greater entrepreneurial freedoms, there are more opportunities available. Food, beverages, even cars. Cuba imported from the United States last year 300 million of dollars in goods, so something is happening. It's better to be first right now. Still, it's not clear how many U.S. banks, if any, will take advantage of the change in policy, which the Biden administration previewed in 2023. So far, U.S. government officials tell me they're not aware of any U.S. banks willing to do business with Cuban entrepreneurs. Part of the problem could be something called overcompliance. Even when it's legal, U.S. financial institutions will have nothing to do with Cuba. The risks simply outweigh any potential rewards. For entrepreneurs like those at Dador, the new relaxed restrictions could make it easier for them to buy materials from the U.S., even sell their clothes to customers abroad. I mean, that's part of the Cuban resilience. That's who we are. That's, I think that's actually part of our identity now always thinking outside the box because we've always had so many challenges and so many limitations. Cubans deal with endless restrictions placed on them from outside and within. However big or small the opportunity they are given though, Cuba's entrepreneurs will make the most of it. Patrick Ottman, CNN Havana. Some states are taking steps to limit or cut rising property taxes as home values dramatically increase. Colorado, Alabama, and Wyoming have new laws that limit the rise in tax assessed values for homeowners. Colorado also has a ballot proposal that could cap the growth of property tax revenue. Nebraska and Kansas will hold special legislative sessions to address property tax relief. And Georgia voters will decide in November if increased in assessed home values should be limited. Tesla's eight biggest shareholders, Norway's Wealth Fund, says it will vote against approving CEO Elon Musk's $56 billion paycheck. Shareholders are set to vote on the package this week. A Delaware judge invalidated it earlier this year. Well, there's another run on many tote bags at Trader Joe's. This time for an insulated version, the grocery store chain quickly sold out of mini canvas bags selling for $2.99. The mini coolers are a dollar more and the bags are selling on resale sites for substantially more. Well, it's summer movie season and if 2023 was all about Barbenheimer, then 2024 could turn into the war of the popcorn buckets. With flagging numbers at the box office, movie studios are turning to some unique methods to get folks back into theaters. Lee Wallman is in New York with more. Summer movies are struggling to make waves. The box office is down at this point about 24% versus last year. Memorial Day weekend, a traditional major money maker for the film industry, saw the lowest box office in 29 years. Last year's writers and actors strikes mean we can expect a lighter than usual slate of movies this summer, further driving fears of a theatrical meltdown. So we need a hero right now for the box office. That hero could come in a very strange form. Ryan Reynolds teasing the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine by declaring the war of the popcorn buckets. Media analyst Paul DeGardabedian says movie theater chains are looking for any angle to compete with streaming. There's so many ways that movie theaters are trying to get people to come to the theater. Great food and beverage, reclining seats, great sound and vision. Now they're enticing customers with collectible concession vessels for major releases like Taylor Swift's Eras Tour, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, and Dune Part Two, which achieved viral infamy for its bizarre bucket design including a lurid lampooning on SNL. That film went on to an $82.5 million opening weekend. Degarbedian says that proves all's fair in movie marketing. That's the biggest opening weekend of the year so far for Dune 2. I think that proved that the 
the popcorn bucket just created a conversation and built the brand even bigger. In New York, I'm Lee Waldman. And that's it for Consumer Watch. Here's Chris with another look at your forecast. And we're starting with a quick look outside from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. The sun, of course, continuing to rise, which is always a good sign. If it doesn't, then we've got problems. We have just a few clouds out there this morning. MoDOT camera, 30 second in range line, looking good as well. Again, just a few clouds here and there. We do have these flood warnings in the uh, green here. These will continue through 7 o'clock this morning. And then these that are in the, uh, the little fun shapes here, these are the River Creek Stream Flood Advisories. These have varying expiration times between uh, the next couple of days, uh, some running through Wednesday evening. So do be aware of that if you're planning on being on the water, especially in the southeast Kansas, northeast Oklahoma, you do need to take precautions. That's because look at all this rain we got in this red box alone. The average is three and a half inches, but you can see we got that swath of heavier rain. And as it tracked into southwestern Missouri, we have uh, totals out here, eight, nine inches of rainfall. We'll uh, have another full look at your forecast here in just a moment. It's also about time to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Those are coming up after the break. But first, here's what's happening on CBS Mornings. I'm Jerika Duncan. Coming up on CBS Mornings, David Begno introduces us to a young writer who details the life stories of ordinary people. See how one story turned into a friendship between two people and a lesson for all of us. That's coming up on CBS Mornings. Time for some Monday birthdays, and we're going to start in Chanute with Jacob LaRue celebrating birthday number 32. He's the mayor of Chanute, and he's pictured there with the K-State mascot. Happy birthday. And over in Frontenac, a happy 60th birthday to Scott Holland. It says postmaster of Weir, Kansas. Happy 60th birthday from his wife, Karen, and his sons and their families. And then our neighbor in Crestline, Barbara Duncan, celebrating birthday number 75. Happy birthday, Barbara. And over in Carthage, Jonathan and Jessica Hohenschel are celebrating their 60th anniversary. Happy anniversary. And we've got Bill and Denise Sears celebrating their 30th anniversary. A very happy anniversary to the Sears family. And of course, uh, we love celebrating birthdays and anniversaries yes. with you folks in the four states. And Elise can tell you where you can send them if you want to celebrate with us. Absolutely. Go ahead and submit those birthdays and anniversaries to birthdays at koamnewsnow.com. Be sure to include any messages and, of course, photos into meet the deadline that you see there at the bottom of your screen. Absolutely. And of course, that's to ensure that it airs on the appropriate day. All right, let's start with another look outside from our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. Again, just a few clouds. Otherwise, a great start to the day. Seeing the same from the MoDOT camera, 32nd and range line. Again, just a stray cloud or two. And the MoDOT camera down in Neosho looking fantastic as well. Looking back to the west along US 60. Again, a reminder about these flood warnings here until 7 o'clock this morning. Then we have the river stream and creek flood advisories in parts of southeastern Kansas and into northeastern Oklahoma. So these have varying expiration times again through uh, the next uh, about 48 hours. We received a lot of rain, especially here with these uh, brighter colors and into southwest Missouri. Some of these colors we're looking at eight, nine inches of rain over the last 48 hours from all that uh, thunderstorm activity we saw this past weekend. Future track for us today. There is really nothing to show. In fact, it's going to remain that way for the next several days. Other than some clouds here and there, it is going to be sunny and quite warm as we head down the road as well. So we had the rain presenting its problems. Now the sun giving us its own problems. The UV index today is 10, which is very high. It puts your burn time at eight to 10 minutes on unprotected skin. So again, some jobs you can't avoid being outside, so make sure you are taking appropriate precautions where you can. And if you don't have to be outside, then limit what time you have while you're out there uh, to make sure that you're just staying safe from the sun. Quick look outside from our camera 7th and range line too. sunrise looks beautiful. It's cool. 56 wind is calm in Joplin and again, a cool start across the area this morning. Temperatures most of us mid upper 50s. We've got a couple of low 50s and we even have a couple of 60 degree readings. All of us, though, warming up today. We're looking at temperatures to be about average with sunny skies going up to about 76 by 11 o'clock this morning ahead of highs today again into the upper 70s and low 80s. Summer is going to return with a vengeance later this week and into next week. We're talking very 
warm, just downright hot temperatures. If you thought it's been hot the last few days, it's going to get hotter yet. We'll break down details on that here in just a moment, as well as the news you need to know. And when we make the transition to Fox 14, which by the way, that happens at 7 a.m., it's important not to forget just the men that made an impact in World War II, but also the women who played an important part of the Army. And here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. A two vehicle crash on a range line sends two people to the hospital Saturday afternoon. The crash occurred on 17th and South Range Line. Numerous witnesses said the driver of the SUV was ejected on impact. And Joplin police say the two transported to hospitals suffered non-life threatening injuries. Authorities are still investigating what occurred. Parsons Police Department announced Friday that Kristen Vargas, the mother of the four children and her 18 month daughter died from a house fire in Parsons last week. Two other children, a seven month old and a four year old are still receiving treatment in the hospital. The fourth child, a six year old has been placed with a relative. Officials are still investigating the fire. And the city of Altamont held its annual Flag Day celebration on Saturday. The all-day celebration included some usual staples such as turtle races and a water balloon toss, as well as some new events like a quilt show and an eSports tournament. A $500 medallion hunt was held during the week leading up to the event. And that's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Upper 70s and low 80s, sunny skies, maybe a passing cloud or two, north breeze at around 5 to 10 miles an hour. Heading into the evening, a few more clouds out there will eventually be partly cloudy overnight tonight. Then another cool one back into the upper 50s and low 60s. But as mentioned earlier, summer will return. Low 80s tomorrow, mid 80s on Wednesday, upper 80s on Thursday, low to possibly even mid 90s as we head into the upcoming weekend. And as you can see, skies remain sunny as well. So it's going to be very hot. You want to make sure you're taking appropriate precautions to stay safe out there as these temperatures warm up because it's been we've had some hot days, but it's going to get even hotter uh, by this weekend and then maybe a stray shower or two by next Wednesday. All righty. Well, coming up today at noon, we're making skillet chicken ramen toss in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. As your morning news continues. On Hi. <laughs> I, I love Mondays here oh, before okay. the stage. Well, your morning news continues on KO with CBS Mornings. Demand for hybrid vehicles is soaring. Coming up on CBS Mornings, well, gas prices continue to be high. Find out why consumers are shying away from purchasing all electric cars. Or you can switch on over with us on Fox 14, where your only local morning news continues. This morning, people with a passion for history have the opportunity to dig a little deeper with some trained professionals. Plus, everyone's favorite dessert maker, Lori yeah. Horton, back in the studio to finish making those Oreo lovers cookies. They However, look so good. Oh, they look oh. amazing. It's an absolutely fantastic recipe. Can't go wrong with dessert on a Monday. That's nope. how Monday should be. Breakfast every Monday. Right now. Yeah. Dessert for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great, it's a great way yeah. to start the day. That is going to wrap it up for us for now, though. We will see you back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And we'll see you today at noon.